get you excited as a detectorist. Nothing will. Beautiful old home that I've gotten permission to detect. Now, I've already detected it. And I know what I found and what I haven't found. The very first hole was something pretty cool. And the very last hole was something cool. I'm going to show you the last hole first and then the first hole second. I'm literally heading to my truck. That one's mine. I wish that one was mine, but that one's mine. And I'm going sideways across the yard and I dig up a bale seal. That is very, very cool because this house is a Sears and Roebuck house. It's literally a package sold by Sears and Roebuck probably somewhere around 1908, 1910. The train tracks are right here and they used to run, well they do, they're like 10 feet beyond the edge of the road there. And this house rolled in on a train and was set up. I thought that was pretty cool. had no idea that Sears sold houses. So, who knows? Maybe one of the old bail seals used to bind something up when the house was delivered. I'll clean it up. Maybe it has something on it, but it doesn't look like it. Very cool find. Oh, wow. Boy, it did clean up nice. That's the first identifiable bail seal that I found. So I did some quick Googling. It says Picard and Co. And then below that it says Bordeaux. And that is a wine. So maybe they shipped a case of wine in here or something. Cool piece of history. I was fortunate enough to find an old photograph of this house and I wanted to take a corresponding photograph just to show you the changes in time and quite a bit has changed. Sears and Roebuck offered these houses from 1908 to 1940 and in that period of time they sold about 70,000 but there was a fire of some sort and the records of where the houses were built were lost. They weren't small houses and they are gorgeous. They can sometimes be identified just by the woodwork on the inside, which will have a Sears and Roebuck stamp hidden somewhere on it. They range in price from about $1,000 to $5,000. And they came rolling in on a train, pre-cut and ready to assemble, along with a 75-page manual on how to do it. I thought assembling Barbie houses at Christmas time was hard. Well, if you're going to have a first target, that's a good one to have. I cannot believe that. It's the first hole I dug. And it's an Indian head. It's in good shape, too. Let's see if we can get a year on it. That don't ever happen. It, I don't know. Maybe this place wasn't detected that good. Gosh, that thing's pretty. It's in eighteen hundreds. Eighteen. Eighteen. I think it's an eighteen eighty eight, maybe an eighteen eighty three. Which I've dug two eighteen eighty threes. That's the oldest coin I've ever dug. So that would be a third one, either that or an eighteen eighty eight. But I'm gonna put a stick on that toothpick and. See if we can clean it up a little better. Good start. Well, I just dug something that I you'd think you'd dig everywhere. A jack. You would think those would be absolutely everywhere around the edges of roads and stuff, but it's the first one I've ever dug. Pretty cool. And I just got a cool old, I don't know, suspender buckle. Looks like that slides up and down. I guess that's what it is. I like it though. 
Well, it's not the oldest thing in the world, but it's cool looking. It's compact. Hold on a second. Come on. With the makeup in it. I don't know why that rang up loud, but it sure did. Oh well, I'm not in need of it. Well, I hadn't filmed one of these in a long time. I've been digging them pretty regular. I guess everybody does, but... Old paper shotgun shell. Western Super X. And that's always cool to find. Old key. I'll keep going. Well, what is that? Set right there. Set the top to a lantern. I don't know. I like it though. Well, that looks old. Right there. And I creamed it with a shovel. I did. I guess it's some sort of a buckle. It's a weird looking one though. Man, did I cream that thing. I'll clean it up. I don't think it has any design on it. It may not even be a buckle, but no, it is too. Right there is where the tongue went. That's a cool looking one. Been a whole lot cooler if I dummy hadn't hit it. Oh well. Good find though. All right, taking a break at work to work on a relic. Got my buckle back into shape and amazingly it didn't break it did have a tongue on it and i'm kind of at a loss i don't know what to think about this one it puts me in mind of those bright colored church lady dresses from the mid to late 1980s you remember those they had the big old monster three inch wide belts that went around the middle could be from something like that you know maybe it was covered with fabric or something um, but it's the right metal for something old er and it's got the right patina so and it did come from a early 1900s house so you guys tell me because I don't know what to think all right I just got a second buckle off the property and this one's a little different I've I'm not sure what's going on with those nubs. Four on this side and two in the middle. So if any of you guys know, you can let me know on that one too. Interesting looking. Well, I'm sitting out here in my editing studio and going over some of the footage before I post it. And I realized I had one coin in this video. That's not unusual for me. Uh, if you coin guys haven't figured it out by now, I don't dig a whole lot of good coins. I just don't live in the right area for it. Um, but, didn't stop me from getting some pretty incredible coins this week. One of them came from a very unlikely source. My wife. Now, she hadn't uh, thoroughly impressed with the hobby. But she's coming around. Because she's starting to look. She works retail. Came home the other day and said, I got something for you. Had a big smile on her face. 1964 one of the uh, girls she works retail one of the girls heard a funny sound when they dropped some change in the till and it was a silver quarter and my baby brought it home to me it tickled me to death these other two coins that I'm about to show you that came from a subscriber by the name of John DeVita now he's not a detectorist and he's just watching my videos he likes the history and he said I want to send you something now I don't know why Somebody goes, well, I'm going to send an old history hound something. But all I can do is be appreciative. And I am very appreciative for these coins. Two coins I never thought I'd get a chance to hold. Take a look at what he sent. All right, well, here's the two coins that John sent me. The first thing I saw coming out of the package was that date, 1873. And that is a seated half dollar hold i love that it's hold i love hold coins and i love the eagle the design of that coin it's beautiful 
definitely a coin he said in his little note to me probably coin you're never gonna dig and i could not agree more i'm probably never gonna dig one of those so very happy just to own one just be able to hold it that was an awesome coin but this one i just stared at 1777 two real wow what history in that coin right there. Can you imagine the stories that thing could tell where it's been? And it was minted in Peru. One thing that's always uh, been a question for me on these coins, I have seen some of these Spanish coins and, and that coin's got the old kings on them. And I'm telling you, some of the images of the bust they look like the goofiest looking dudes you ever seen in your life and i always wondered was the artwork that bad and if it was that bad how did the dudes that designed the coin keep from losing their heads when the king saw it but i'm gonna show you a picture of this coin in a little bit sharper detail and i want you to pay attention to this dude's nose man he's got a honker so i did a little research i was curious what did king charles the third actually look like Check this out. Unfortunately, King Charles looked just as goofy in real life. Thanks for watching.